welcome back. I'm Donna Valente, the co-founder of the Enterprise Sales Institute, which is a uniquely different sales academy because we focus on mindset uh, in addition to skills and tools um, to help you become more effective in your communications with your clients. And uh, today, uh, our topic, our sales insight is going to be on um, artificial intelligence in business to business sales and how how it impacts sales and sales reps on their daily jobs. And my distinguished guest uh, today is Erhan Aaron, and he is actually the founder of Zephyr, which is an AI-based application designed to accelerate the B2B sales um, processes. And um, he is, uh, by the way, it happens to be the winner of the IBM Cognitive Fair Hackathon and is part of the IBM Global Entrepreneur Program. So welcome, Aaron. I'm very pleased to have you. Thank you so much for uh, attending with me today. Hey, thank you very much for inviting. Lots of great things from Seattle. Hi, everyone. We're live from Seattle. We're live in Jersey, all getting snow, 12 foot of snow over here. <laughs> you have fun today. <laughs> Do you? Yes, that's nice. You see, you see the sunlight. I can't from... really see it. I see the sun now. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Zephyr um, and a little bit about how you came to uh, build the product. Uh, sure. Thank you very much. As you say, Zephyr is an AI-based social selling application. And the, really, the, our goal is to accelerate sales cycle stages uh, to improve the efficiency in prospecting. So idea is very interesting. Last, I would say, five years, I spent my time in market research and biz dev. As a biz dev, when I find, and I'm just a biz dev actually for an other AI company, when I find out that when I, it was taking lots of time for me to search about my customers, the company, as well as my prospect. The interesting thing, when I find an actionable insight, I was able to see that sales was moving very smoothly and very quickly. And I was able to find or see myself next to decision makers faster. But on the other hand, that the gathering of information was taking so much time. So the question turned into how I can use really the available data is online there. We, we almost like all of us turn into like a celebrity, the what information we share. Yeah. And I can turn that into an actionable insight for salespeople to help them to prospecting, to help them build relationship and connection, at the same time, understand some sales trigger in the industry as well as the company. So that's how the uh, Zephyr was born. Wow, that's awesome. So say some more a little bit about those insights and what this application or any artificial intelligence application can really do for the sales team and um, how they'll use it for predictive uh, analysis and predict, uh, pr prioritizing leads and stuff. Yes, I want to give that real life example. So I was in one of my customers was Fortune 300 oil and gas company uh, two years ago, and I was introduced that person with an insider friend, basically. He said that, you know what, you should talk with Erhan, so, etc. He's doing blah, 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 blah. I sent him that person as an email. He's a chief data scientist. No answer. One more email, CC my friend, in the same organization, no answer. Then I start searching about this guy because he's a high level guy, chief data scientist, start to find out what he posts, what he publish, etc. Then I find the paper and I kind of find that that is exactly his interest because he has another conference call, was talking about some stuff and that paper was right on that. And I just write him an email, I said, hey, you know, you might be interested in this paper because he's talking about this, you already mentioned about in that conference. He answered me in an hour. Then we set up another meeting in this week. And he was also apologetic. He said, I am sorry I was traveling. I couldn't answer you. Long story short, that guy turned into our champion in the company. So that piece of information, obviously it took hours to find. And you know, sometimes you are not get lucky. That's the insight I am talking about. The insight about the person that moved to Needle. So yeah. I look at AI this perspective. Anytime you do an act, number one thing is actually the, the biggest AI machine is our brain. You know, first of all, I like to solve that problem with my hands, with my getting hands dirty, look at the different trends and things, and I research it. Then the question 
Is there any way that to automate that process? When we talked about sales inside the Zephyr, one way to approach that social selling problem is looking at people's different social media profile, you know, the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and extract that information and analyze their personality, buying personas, and provide psychographic insight about that. It also be the information about what they post, how they post. This is one way of insight. Another way of insight about their companies and industry. Can I find some triggers that will make that particular customer more attractive than my other possible prospects so I should make the first approach? Is this what you mean by humanizing the, uh, the, the, humanizing the B2B tool? That, that is exactly right. That yeah. is exactly right. Because, you know, we are in a, uh, we are information bombardment, you know, and anytime this happens, more, like I get uh, tens of email per day, and anytime I see something kind of do some research about me, and anytime I see that they read about the company, they read about yeah. me, then it's really changed my perspective about that person. Yeah. Number one thing, I feel like they did their homework. I feel I owe to them and I should respond when they at least, uh, you know, uh, deserve an answer. From yeah, I think, I think this really uh, is a great example of insight selling. And when people say, well, what is insight selling anyway? There's a lot of homework that has to be done in doing this um, insight selling and learning about the individual's behavior, their social footprint, what mm -hmm. kind of things they're interested in, in terms of research, what's in their strategic plan. So I think what I hear you saying is that the, the artificial intelligence solution should be able to serve, grab this stuff and serve it up to the rep, as opposed to the rep going out and having to try to source all that information and assembling it into something meaningful. Uh, for the customer to react to. Absolutely. One great example, again, uh, I was doing uh, competitive research and you, when you think about, like when you do a general search, like sometimes people ask, hey, we don't need Zephyr because we have Google. That's right, you do have Google. That's us awesome when we are not replacing Google. But when you do a research, a search about something, one thing you find out about, especially this happens in the companies in news space, you see the same news repeat itself from different resources. When you read through them, it doesn't add you any actionable information. So you may easily spend a couple yeah. of hours by not learning anything. But we are working on an application right now, can compare all these different news and can say that 80% of all these news are the same. So if you read this, versus the versus other five, there is not so much information gain you are getting to. That's an insight that you are helping me to save some time. I'm yeah. still getting some insight, but I don't need to read other five. I just need to read that one. So now think about that in that level. Think about that, that news also that artificial intelligence can tell me the differences in that article, can tell me the sentiment, what is the positive things about that versus negative things. The, again, the goal is here, almost to surface that kind of like a built a filter in that information overflow and turn into something that I can turn into action. Like exactly my previous example for that thing. Think about you have four or five different trigger points about your customer. Let's say they start hiring right now. Let's say there is a couple of nice news about the Street, like happening in oil and gas industry. We hear so many good news about Wall Street about, you know, the, 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 the supply demand in, uh, inequality will be changing its position. So yep. think about that. I am consuming that little piece of information to now give an option as a salesperson to choose one of these insights and go with that and at least make a try, make an approach uh, to your client. Therefore, yeah, I that's... always say in artificial intelligence is always, I always say human guided machine assistant. Ah, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah, basically you are in a driver's seat yeah. and there is information coming, but the system is use certain filtering when that common information. Yeah. So what types of, of trends are you seeing um, companies, well, what other products are you seeing companies use on a, 
on a daily basis to help support their sales reps. I see. So in terms of trends, I am seeing that the, you know, two thirds of sales reps times goes to non-selling activities. Definitely, I will see that that will drop. So we will see more application in terms of help you to automate the data entry, they help you somehow integrate your Salesforce stronger and stronger. And there are big guys like, you know, Salesforce uh, is trying to solve this problem. They have a recent agreement even with IBM. They're bringing IBM AI engine to Salesforce that will solve that problem. So one thing I will see that there is big guys will spend a tremendous amount of time to solve this inefficiency problem because they, are, uh, they realize that problem. Another thing, we will see hyper-personalization and hyper-segmentation. So what I mean by that? So sometimes when I reach someone as a sales or in a company, the first thing they ask me, oh, did you read about our recent blog? Or did you read about us? Did you know about this? So almost I feel all of us turn into mini celebrities. So we will see more application can help us to hyper-personalize, more like an account-based marketing type of application, really focus on that individual client. And this is the convergence, basically. We are right now here, we will do better, better, better. That's another trend, uh, I see that. Also, another thing I see is almost in the sales, I would say, battlefield. You know, we will we start working with marketing too much. There's always a gap between marketing and sales. There's always a fight. Yeah. Fundamental, I, I would think that that gap gets shrink because it came to a point of we cannot do one on another. We need both of us yeah. to, to, to approach, a, 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 to approach a, our client. And I see also more things coming in social selling. Uh, people will have share more in their social, social profile, more in social selling. I will see more chatbots will come into place in the especially in the shorter terms uh, we will see more of that and i look at this way anytime a sales rep actually see themselves they are doing a repetitive task that they are bored or they don't want to deliver or they say oh my god i have to do that there will be an opportunity to automate that we will have better forecasting tools available to forecast our uh, pipeline forecast you know that was my uh, terrible uh, Monday morning meetings like uh, what, what is your forecast your pipeline ah uh, I don't know so much I mean but <laughs> let's I mean we have an entire AI engine let's analyze my sales call and we can have a better idea than yeah. me. so we will have better tools will come in the, the pipeline forecast there's some already but it's going to be a uh, the accuracy will be improved uh, Lead prioritizations as well. We will have hundreds of leads. We will be able to prioritize them better, uh, more accurately. Looking for some other information or other data we will bring in the system is not exist. I think when we look at I, one thing, I look at that we will come to an era of we will integrate our own data with our site's market data. Like I may have so many know about that companies and leads, but I will start bringing some outside data sources like a market research, the trend, the industrial data, then I will enrich uh, that my data and it will help me to better forecast. It will help me to make a better approach uh, to the clients. That's um, an excellent um, answer to the question. And it, it, it's funny because I think, you know, we want to have reps focusing on higher value things than those things that are, you know, so repetitive and they take just too much time and they're not really focused on strategy. They're not focused on the interpersonal stuff. How am I going to strategize about the account and understand the political dynamics and managing the sales process, if you will. So that's, that's awesome. So I, I in that answer, I also hear, uh, remove the fear. AI is going to replace the sales rep. <laughs> Right? That, that's right. So, machine, we were selling to machine. <laughs> that will be funny, yeah. It's a, it's a good question, actually. This, this question asked me multiple times. I look at problem from that perspective. In what type of sales are you doing? If you are doing transactional sales, you know, like you are an order taker, definitely. I mean, we will, we will have this trend. But yeah. if you are doing B2B uh, type of consultative sales, you're environment is complex not at all actually will ai will make your job easier 
So let's look at the data. So once I remember Challenger sales, you know, 2011, when they first came out that how many people sales people sell, they say we sell 5.4 people. That right now, that number, I think around 7.2. So last seven years, we are selling 50% more. We have more decision makers. I want to, I want to, I want to say this. Yeah. I've been selling yeah. to eight or nine people for, exactly. for 15 years. I, and so when I hear some of this stuff, it's crazy. I, you know, cause I've always dealt in the educational technology space. There was always seven people involved, 15 sometimes. It was committee. Everything was a committee. Exactly. So that, that's the thing, basically. That number is not going down. It's going higher because there will be more people will involved in the decision makers. This yeah. means that it's, sales is going to be even harder in terms of that. And another interesting thing, uh, LinkedIn actually have a workforce report. I, I also uh, share this one in my LinkedIn account too. There is a technical skill abundance in major tech cities. So basically, there's lots of techie guys in major tech cities. Guess what? What is the scarcity? Salespeople, contract negotiation. In a technical city, the, the talent we need actually, not more software engineer, is more salespeople. If you see other way around, if AI was replacing, you will see a reverse trend. So, and it's quite interesting. 80% of the sales executive believe that uh, AI will make you more efficient. I look at this again from that perspective. Our number one customer is our, our boss. So if my boss wants it, I will deliver it. Yeah. So really, the, the tr question is not in AI will replace me because in the sales cycle, regardless we are B2B to B2C, all sales are, I believe, H to H, human to human. So the question turned into how I can use this AI technologies to take advantage of these AI technologies to create competitive edge for my company, also for myself as a sales rep. I look at the problem from that perspective. Great. So the, answer, the quick answer is no. <laughs> good, good. And we, we have a few more minutes left, so I want to ask you sure. two questions. And the last question that is revolving around AI would be, um, how can sales teams or sales leaders or organizations determine um, which AI is going to best support their sales team and how do they vet out the vendors to make sure that they're getting the thing that they actually need for uh, building efficiency uh, and productivity into the selling cycles? That's a beautiful question. It's Thank you. Really Thank you. I, I spent <laughs> all night thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I will start first analyzing my own internal sales process and identify the bottlenecks because I believe, which is true, each organization has different problem set in terms yeah. of prioritizations. Yeah. So I will first go internally look for it. And when I find my problem, I will turn into that in the problem statement, which means I am having a problem in lead conversion. I am getting a problem in uh, this. So I will kind of put that problem then when I go look for companies I will provide on the problem statement and I will ask them to deliver me the solution the best way the easiest way to do that if it's a software company when they identify when you tell them the problem they should be able to come up with a very quick solution easily using their own technology so that if you are impressed go next level if the company doesn't engage with it, this happens to me, by the way. I did that practice when I was Fortune 500. There was hundreds of companies. I make that process, that suddenly drop 10, that, that 10 drop to two. Usually that happens. So it's very easy to eliminate that because you, I don't want to hear your value proposition. This is my problem. How do you solve it? By the way, solve it for me. Spend a day, half day, two hours. Show me. Show me the vision. Show me how you can do that. That's what I will do, basically. Uh, analyze my uh, analyze my process, turn the problem statement, send that problem statement to vendor to see who is willing to solve, who is willing to work together. And the one I am impressed by their result, that's the one. Because the challenge is going to be, it's not going to be so much the technology, it's going to be so much to change management. The challenge is going to be, yes, you build something. Yes, I can see the value. Can my employees use it and have the same value? How long does it take to train my team? 
how easy to use, how easy to implement. That's going to be the challenge. If it goes to like an algorithm battle, like my XYZ algorithm is faster than blah, 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 that's to me a major uh, turnoff. Because yeah. again, not going to be so much the algorithm. It's going to be the application. It's, the it's just like when you're selling something, you have to understand as a rep what the business issues are That's right. with, with, the, with the customer's um, um, business. And same thing when you're, I guess when you're saying is when you're analyzing uh, whether or not you want to adopt an AI, what's your business problem? What do you want to solve? And really go through that and what you, what, what you want the future state to look like for your reps. That's great. I really appreciate that. The last question is, how do people reach out to you? How do they get a hold of you to learn a little bit more about Zephyr and AI and what you're doing to help um, help uh, sales teams improve? Uh, the easiest way to reach me out is my uh, LinkedIn, as well as we have a website, uh, Zephyr.community, and also my uh, LinkedIn, that's another easy way to reach me out, uh, Arhan, E-R-H-A-N. Eren, E R E N, and I'm happy to uh, help them. We, we are in very early stage startup, so we we are we are in that stage that we have hands to hands experience with our customer to solve their specific problem. That's so great. That is that exact point right now. Yeah, I mean that's great because people like that intimacy. They like to see what's going on, and um, you know, possibly add insights to you. There's nothing like when a customer feels like, yeah, hey, I helped, I helped uh, inspire Aaron a little bit. So thank Absolutely. you so much for your time, folks. Thank you for listening in. This is Donna Valente with the Enterprise Sales Institute, and you can reach me at Donna at EnterpriseSalesInstitute.com. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Donna, for organizing it.